fireline tactics should consider management objectives, fire behavior, and crew safety when determining line location. There will be times when the crew boss will need to consult with his or her supervisor to make decisions on fireline location as a situation changes. Hand crews will be involved in three primary methods of attack during line construction. Direct attack. Any treatment of burning fuel, such as by wetting, smothering, or chemically quenching the fire, or by physically separating the burning from the unburned fuel. Parallel attack. A method of suppression in which fire line is constructed approximately parallel to and just far enough from the fire edge to enable workers and equipment to work effectively, though the line may be shortened by cutting across unburned fingers. The intervening strip of unburned fuel is normally burned out as the control line proceeds, but may be allowed to burn out unassisted where this occurs without undue delay or threat to the line. Indirect attack. A method of suppression in which control line is located along natural fire breaks, favorable breaks in topography, or at considerable distance from the fire and the intervening fuel is burned out. Indirect fire line can be very hazardous, particularly when weather conditions change rapidly and in areas of fast burning fuels and steep topography. Indirect line should not generally be built if it is possible to attack the fire directly. Utilization of indirect attack fire lines has been a significant factor in numerous recent burnover incidents. Safety requirements as referenced in the fire line handbook must be followed. In the past, failure to follow these requirements has resulted in numerous tragedies. An experienced lookout should be posted where the action of the fire can be seen at all times. He or she must maintain constant communication with the crews building the indirect line. Safety zones will be established or designated and communicated prior to starting indirect line construction and all crews informed as to their location. Burning out should follow directly behind line construction whenever possible. Check frequently on fire weather conditions, forecasts, and action on the fire. The division supervisor should remain at the most critical portions of the line until the job is completed. Both indirect and downhill line construction situations should cause a crew boss to stop and assess the fire environment. Before attempting any tactical operations, consider the risks and hazards and, where appropriate, take action utilizing safety directives. Be sensitive to fire activity changes, weather indicators, and your crew's capabilities. Remember to expect diurnal changes in relative humidity, temperature, winds, and atmospheric stability. Indicators may vary in different regions and fuel types. Ask questions in unfamiliar situations.